Um, the hope <laughs> of a new day dawning. And that when we come together and as we come together, uh, we just magnify that hope and allow it to manifest. So thank you, Faith Rivera and Harold Payne for that great song. Okay, now if you recall, in the movie The Wizard of Oz, at the end of Dorothy's journey, trying to find her way home on the yellow brick road, Glinda the Good Witch told Dorothy, you had the power all along, my dear. You just had to learn it for yourself. Now Glinda, along with being a good witch, was also a wise witch. And so basically she was telling Dorothy that words don't teach. Experience teaches. And that Dorothy needed all of those experiences that she had along the yellow brick road, all the challenges that she faced and the fears that she confronted in order for her to become aware of the power within her, the power that was natural to her, the power that was hers all along. So the first question this morning is this. How many books have we all read that have told us that we are powerful spiritual beings? How many times have we been told that all we need to do is to focus on what we want health, happiness, companionship, financial abundance, success, anything we want. And if we don't argue against it, that through the law of attraction, whatever it is will come to us. How many times have we heard that? I know you've heard it a lot here. So how many of us by now? No, that's true. Not because we read it somewhere, not because we heard it somewhere, but because we've experienced that truth for ourselves. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we considered this passage from the way of knowing. Love is the essence of what you are. If God is love, and love is the essence of what you are, this can only mean that the essence of you is God. Right here, right now, with not one thing that must be done to earn it, shape it, or get it. It sounds so good, and it should, because deep within each of us, it rings true. And that vibration, the vibration of that truth, calls to us every moment to recognize ourself as the very presence of God in form and function as the very presence of love and joy and peace, of creativity and health and vitality in manifestation and action, the body of the soul, the outer of the great inner, the visible of the invisible whole. But so often, we don't respond to that inner vibrational call or identify who we are from the inside out. 
I mean, we look at our physical form or we remember some of the stuff that we were told about ourself and believed was true, or we recall our past embarrassments or mistakes or failures, so that even though our being a powerful spiritual being sounds good, if we haven't experienced our own spiritual power, that power for ourselves. if we haven't consciously connected with the source energy within us, it's easy to doubt that's true. We can hear it a thousand times. We can read about it hundreds of times. I mean, Maybe someday we'll fully accept that we are inseparably connected, but not quite yet, because it doesn't seem quite true yet. That's why Ernest Holmes wrote in The Science of Mind, marvelous as the concept may be, it is nonetheless true that a human, appearing human, has at his disposal in what he called his mind, a power which seems to be limitless. This is because he is one with the whole within. The whole within us can't possibly exclude us and still be whole. If we don't feel one with the pure, positive source energy of life yet, if we don't feel one with the God of our creation, if we don't feel one with the inner world of unlimited possibilities for our expressing life in this outer world, it's not because the God that is present everywhere has gone anywhere. We've just lost our mind in the muck of thoughts and beliefs that we haven't been willing to let go of yet because they seem more true. It's our mind that's off its rocker and doesn't believe in, in the presence of the infinite mind of God that it's using, even though every time we think we're using it. That's why Jesus, I mean, who could work miracles in a heartbeat, said so long ago, I of myself can do nothing. We of ourself, without the divine consciousness of life within us, could not be aware that we're alive. We wouldn't know that. But we are alive, and we do know that, and we're using the mind of God to know that. Right now, do we know we're alive? That's the mind of God letting us know that. And we of ourselves, without that mind couldn't think one thought, pleasant or unpleasant. But we do. And we know it. So we might want to ask ourselves another good question. How many more challenges do I need to face? How many more fears do I need to confront? Along my yellow brick road of life, 
before I accept my oneness with the allness of God that has been the source of my life all along, all along. Every moment is an opportunity for us to wake up to who we truly are and to start living rather than limiting our life on earth. I mean, are we letting the past limit our future? Are we letting the ways of the world limit our ways in the world? Every moment we are free to take our spirituality on a test drive. Every moment. That's why in the book of Malachi and the New International Version, puts it this way. Test me in this and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that there will not be room enough to store it. Every day, the circumstances of this world, of this and that, give us opportunity after opportunity to test our spiritual prowess and prove it's true. Are we going to let doubt keep us thinking small? Keep us fearful and unimaginative about what life can be and who we can be in it? Are we going to let doubt keep us lacking what we want and experiencing what we don't want? Are we going to let doubt keep us out of accessing more and more of that unlimited power to create a life that just gets better and better each day? What we experience as life, as our life in life, every moment is coming from within us. And the world we see isn't doing one thing without our observation of it. It's not a source outside of ourself. There's not a God outside of ourself. There's not anyone else outside of ourself that is creating the world we see even when others seem involved. We are the only experiencer of the life we're living. And we experience what we believe is true about ourself and what life is. If we say, I can't believe it, then we can't. But if we see something and we say, I don't believe it, yes, we do. We see what we believe is true. And we do not see what we don't believe is true yet. It doesn't matter what somebody else believes because we're the only one, the only one who can make anything true for us. Now, if we say we want something and if we mean it, and we know we mean it, if just thinking about that thing we want rings our bells and makes us happy, and if we focus on it with all our thoughts and talk about it in our conversations without doubting, and contradicting, then whatever it is has got to come to us 
quickly and easily, no fuss, no bother, like that. And if it isn't coming quickly and easily, it's because we're letting doubt keep it out. We're pointing mentally and physically to what we want. And at the same time, we're pointing at all the reasons why we can't have it. And in this way, we deny and we defy our spiritual power and the essence of God in us. We are all recipients of the attention of divine source energy. No one is left out in the wholeness of that attention. We are all the beloved of love itself. We're that one we've been waiting for. Therefore, no request, as Jiminy Cricket would sing, is too extreme. In the book of Luke, we read, nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is beyond his ability or his resources. No request is too big or too small. Still, we don't need to start with something that we consider big in order to prove to ourselves and prove in manifestation that we are connected to our source and that the windows of heaven are open to us right now. But we do have to start somewhere, and let ourselves receive at least something that we want. That's how we prove it. So, we're going to start today with that proof. So I invite all of us to just close our eyes, relax, just relax your mind. And just breathe. And let yourself feel good and peaceful and safe. Maybe just feel good you're here in this beautiful energy of the sanctuary and that all is well in this moment. But just relax and let yourself feel good. And just take a few deep breaths. Just feeling relaxed. And now with ease, without any effort at all, let the idea of something you want come into your awareness. Just let it. Wait patiently and expectantly. Oh, it's there. Know that it's okay for you to enjoy life. It's the way you prove that life is good. If it's true, and it is, that whatever arises in our awareness when we're feeling good, is already there for us, within us. 
in our unlimited storehouse of treasures, then all we have to do is accept that's true. That what sounds so good and feels so good is the good life within us calling to us. All that's ever required of us is just to say yes to the one that never says no. And trust that we are worthy of receiving what we desire. So do that now. Let your yes fill you. Feel that yes all the way to your toes. Feel your heart open to receive that blessing. No matter what it is, it's yours already. So just say yes. How are you going to know that you are worthy of receiving anything if you don't let yourself receive at least something you want to? And when you're ready, open your eyes. Abraham Hicks tells us allowing has to do with your own self-love. When you are really liking yourself, it feels like there is no limitation to what you can receive. Let's not let doubt keep us out of experiencing what has been ours all along. Namaste. All right. Well, this is a time of our service when we say to everyone who is here, thank you to everyone watching. And this is um, a special time to say thank you. Uh, we've already thanked everyone who helped with the moving sale. And I want to thank Dr. David Ewing, who is, as we all know, an active member of our steering committee who caused such a beautiful sign out front to be. And um, because it's so noticeable uh, and it's finally being seen, uh, there's been some questions about what are we up to? So this is it. We had a contract with a realtor that is over now. And the beautiful part about it is that we talked together and we decided to take full ownership of the energy, of the positivity, of the can't stop us, who cares what the world has to say, mentality, that we know the possibilities for us. 
And so we've taken stewardship, full ownership of our for sale sign. And uh, that's why it says what it says right now. And it feels so good to be doing that. To know that what happens next is buoyed and uplifted by us and what we believe is true and possible for us. And there's nothing in our way at all. So thank you again. Yes. All right, and thank, thank you all for getting things moving. It's important because we're moving. As Reverend Kim said, we're moving. So it's important to have those moving sales. And um, the last one will be even bigger and even more successful. So wow, way cool. All right. Well, I want to thank all of you here uh, for your financial support because you give where you feel spiritually supported in who you are. And I um, want to thank everyone who, who came and financially supported the moving sale because financial support is it's part of the ways of the world, but what it proves is that the windows of heaven are always open. And there is abundance there to be experienced and manifested. So we are all about opening and receiving and manifesting. So if you'd like to be part of the heavenly outpouring through you, and you don't know how to do that, then I believe our treasurer, who is our sound person today, is going to come, yes, and tell you how. And do I need to stretch until you get down here? Stretch until you get down here. Are you coming down, or are you going to do it from up there? Hmm? I'm done. Check, check. Yes. As I breathe heavily, running down the aisle. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Well, I had the coolest... I don't, I don't know if I'll call it epiphany or revelation this morning when I was doing my meditation. And I've been uh, wanting to, to take this program, which is a year-long program, which is a chiropractic program, and it is what I had keep, kept away. It's very, very, it, it was very, very expensive. I'm talking really expensive. And 
I got. So that was my doubt. My doubt was like, man, I can't do this right now. I just work part time. I mean, all the things that come in when you are doubting. And then, so as I was, <laughs> I didn't know this was going to be moving for me. But I was sitting in meditation, and it just came to me, the oneness, or oneness is all there is. It's all God. It's oneness. And so really, if I look at it from that way, I'm actually just paying myself the money every month. That just made it all feel so good. I'm just paying myself. I'm just not putting it in the bank. I'm just doing it over here. It's all the same. So anyway, that leads me because I'm the treasurer. If you're donating, there's only oneness. So you're just giving to yourself when you give to the church. So anyway, here's the ways you can do it. You can go to facebook.com forward slash Life Enrichment Center and hit the donate button. You can go to lecflint.com, that's our website, and hit the donate button. You can donate via PayPal, which our PayPal ad, email address is lec2512 at gmail.com, or you can send us a check to P.O. Box, it's at Life Enrichment Center, P.O. Box 321294, Flint, Michigan, 485. Three, two. And here in the sanctuary, we'll be doing an offertory Why we listen to Daniel Nimad and Nima Patel singing Grateful. And then Reverend Stephanie will be back up for a gratitude prayer. So, remember the oneness. Okay. <laughs>